the worst thing you can well, do. Well, and is also, say, and this is the other question: like doing harm and being responsible are not necessarily connected. Because at some point, what we do want are interactions between re- adults that we recognize to be responsible for the outcomes of their decisions. And even though, like in the case of the heroin user, you would be like, "Look, to everybody that I invited to shoot up with me, I'm sorry." That was a bad thing. I was, it was, I'm sorry to have encouraged you. We hopefully ultimately recognize that the person who chose to do it themselves is the responsible party and is not a victim of the friend who invited them well, I guess to shoot up. The alternative is you just assume that any one night stand has a victim because of the fact that there wasn't a second night and then you socially stop condoning casual sex i think that's kind of what we are doing but as you said it's only with regard to particular people like, no this is what i'm saying like, <laughs> like we have an, we have a i have a friend who's attractive he has a good six-figure job he's not famous he's not a millionaire but he has he has one night stands all the time he should be canceled if this is what we're saying mm-hmm. like i'm positive that some of these people are being harmed so so it's weird it's weird to me being say, are, are upset are yeah are are saddened by the outcome of the of the interaction yeah and then the other thing is i get screwed in business sometimes and i'm sad about the internet is the rule just anytime someone makes someone sad then the other person is a to blame and b should be considered bad for it yeah no i like what you're saying which is we need to find a way and of course it's look nothing happens on your 18th birthday where you're instantly wise but we need to st- or your 19th or your 20th. Like or your why, 20th or your why 20th. are people in the military? Yeah. Maybe the military, maybe this age of consent and the age to go to the military and the age to vote should all be 25. Yeah. And then if you're under 25, you have a two year band with which you can hook up with people. So yeah. if you're 23 and they're 20, you can't do it and you don't get to vote and you don't get to drive and you don't like, we can mm-hmm. just decide that because science has said the brain doesn't stop evolving till 25, that's the new age. But it just seems odd to say- To be able to choose the leader of the free world, but not- deal with the pressure to to make a decision about who you sleep with. I agree. It's, I, a, it's a strange... I need to be protected from making the decision of hooking up with a celebrity and being upset, mm-hmm. but not from the decision to join the military mm-hmm. and getting shot. I don't know. It just seems weird. It's, like, I how, agree. It's how, totally weird. How, are, how good or bad are we at making decisions at 18? Yes, it's totally if, it's totally weird. Let's just have a, a consistent rule. And if that's... If that's bump, I mean, the military would not let this happen but if we bump up the age to say you can't join the military until you're 25 when people are making better decisions by the way <laughs> there's a there's a <laughs> probably not really a lot of people much yeah. better argument to say that no one over 27 should hook up with people under 25 yeah. you know it's just we as a society have we're, we're it's incongruent yeah. i guess so and then i get it, the other thing that i'm just realizing is like you want to be patronizing to children. It's a good thing to act like a daddy figure, even if you're not the dad, when there's a kid and he's doing something stupid and you see him running across the street, you grab his arm, you go, you can't run out into traffic. Like yeah. patronizing and being the, is, is good. And then at some point, there are adults that you have to go, I, though I think I know what's best for you, my responsibility to you is to give you the facts as best I know them and then allow you to make your own decisions and not protect you or prohibit you from the outcomes of yeah, those. Yeah, we let people become alcoholics. We don't track how much they drink. You mm-hmm. know, if you volunteer to go to the bar every day and drink 12 beers, there's no one looking out for you, trying to make sure, you know, that you can't go into bars because mm-hmm. you're making bad decisions for yourself. Or or you're allowed to get even beyond that. You're allowed to marry someone who's not right for you. You're allowed to, you're allowed to make all kinds of decisions. That So yeah, I don't know what to do with this. But then there's another segment of it, which is... Again, it made sense in and of itself was his description of sex addiction. And then when I listened to it, I was like, yeah, that sounds, you answered all 50 DMs every single night. That sounds all consuming. Yeah. Uh, and it seems to me that sex is kind of similar to food in that it's one of those things that is like, it's not bad for you. It's not like you want to cut it out like heroin. The answer is not zero sex. Yeah, zero heroin is a pretty solid is, is policy. It's a great number. Yeah, any, of heroin. any moderate heroin users out there uh, <laughs> upset by that, you're excluded, but yeah. <laughs> most people, zero is the right number of times to do heroin. Yeah, there's certain addictions it's where it's like- It's probably not the right number of times to have sex in your life. Yeah, and it might be, it might even be the right number of times I play video games to play video games and go, you know what? For me, the, the answer is none. Mm-hmm. I just, or TV, the answer is none. Uh, and for some people, monks, the answer could be no sex, but for the wide majority of people, it's going to be some. Some food 
and some, some sex, food, even though both are addicting. Yes, to and, some people. Yes, and then it was just I, I when I listened to him talk, I was like, okay, that sounds beyond the pale. But also, I'm worried of. I think we kind of pathologize uh, wanting to s have casual sex. We make it an illness. Yeah. And when I've, I was listening, yeah, and this you've is seen the South Park episode, right? All these rich and powerful yeah. men are becoming sex addicts. It's, <laughs> it's rampant. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. And I, I listened to Brett Weinstein and I'd like to talk to him. And he, he talks, you know, casual sex is like junk food and relationships are like nutritious food. And as someone who has done both, I can tell you my, my relationships, uh, People seem they're not harmed. all perfect. People seem more harmed <laughs> by relationships than by casual sex. Sometimes. And here's the thing. They can both be good, good and they can, both be, and they can yeah. both be bad. And I don't. No, people kill themselves over relationships. Like it's clearly not harmless to date seriously. And I've had casual sex that has led to um, one, nothing. And that was fine. And I've also had some that's like, We've remained in contact once every six months via social media. And when this individual has a question about starting their YouTube channel, I can help them. And they say, oh, where are you living? And it's like, yeah, you hook up on and off for three years. And, but mostly you're just friends who see each mm -hmm. other once every six months. Um, and yeah, when I hear this, uh, I feel like there's no nuance around this. Is, like I hear Jordan Peterson talking. I hear Brett Weinstein talking. It's, it's this casual sex is bad. It's it's too dangerous to be trifled with. And everybody needs to look for a monogamous relationship. And as someone who has been, um, quite frankly, more emotionally hurt for my long lasting relationships, which isn't to say that they weren't worth it, mm -hmm. but like more of the difficulties in my life have been caused by those. Uh, Where's the caveat for monogamy? <laughs> Where's the caveat well, for yeah, Jordan? I mean, I believe Jordan <laughs> always had mental health issues, but what triggered his, what ultimately sent him into a medical coma was dealing with his wife's cancer. Cancer. And again, that's uh, horrible, but is a result of the deep and underlying commitment that he made to her. And I'm not saying her, it's a bad thing yeah. at all. I'm just saying it's it's weird to say that a relationship is bad because it has harmed you at some point because his marriage has harmed him. At some point. Yes. And and what he would respond is it's been overwhelmingly good. And that's what I would say about is possible with casual sex encounters as well. And I feel like it's getting left out of the conversation. Do uh, you think and I'm, I actually don't have a conclusion to this because I'm just a guy and I, I don't haven't experienced both. I wonder if there is a difference in how the genders process casual sex. And if there is, I wonder how you square that in 2021 because we are trying, I think, to treat everyone, regardless of gender or any other factor, the same in terms of having control over their life and personal responsibility, which is to say, if one of the genders is more harmed by this, I don't think it's the other gender's responsibility to make decisions for them. You know I, what I'm saying? I agree. And now, and that's underlying all of what we're saying is um, a practical consideration, which I've, which I've seen, because I'm not, I'm not naive to the idea that uh, I've had relationships where I'm like, look, I'm not looking for anything serious. Oh, I totally get it. I totally get it. And then that person is saddened when nothing serious comes. So yeah, yeah. I have learned, I have learned that without being uh, necessarily patronizing as a matter of practicality, uh, I am sussing out. I'm not just engaging in casual relationships with anyone who is open to it. I am looking for like, do you understand what this means? And not just do you say yes, like, do you is that really for, is that get for this? moral purposes or for yourself? That is for a mix because I have after when someone is hurt and I engaged in part of that relationship, I feel guilty. So right. it's a very practical consideration. You can call it moral because there's an element of guilt and I'm but sad that think, they're sad. Do you think someone would be in the wrong for walking around? At, by the way, the, the number one thing that underpins all this is being honest. So every first date before a kiss, they go, just so you know, I have never dated someone exclusively and mm -hmm. I have no plans to in the future. And then they have a relationship with that person mm -hmm. and that person once after three months to be exclusive and the first party goes i said i said I, this day one said, yeah. i'm going to say it again i don't want to do it and i'll never do it and then they keep dating and then a month later the person finally says i can't be with you and they're heartbroken mm -hmm. and devastated and sad has the first person done anything wrong because well, i would argue no i don't think it's their job to do a psych eval on the other person to decide if they think they're qualified to handle a non-monogamous relationship. I think their job is to be honest. And then it's the other person's job to evaluate if that relationship is something they want to enter into. Yes. What I would say is if we know somebody, we make fun of them. 
Um, and it's who, listen, you can say one thing. And then behave in a way that's like, and then on the second date, bring a dozen roses. Mm -hmm. And on the third date, invite both families to a picnic. And then on the fourth date, be like, hmm, when I have kids, I'm going to name them this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. So there is constant communication. And you can overwhelm what you said on the first date that's with fair. your behaviors. Assume their communication. Assume it's consistent and constant and congruent. Just, they're like, hey, I want you to come meet the family. Like, no, it's not really my thing. Yes. Oh, what do you want to do for Valentine's Day? I was thinking you'd come over and we'd watch a movie. Like, yeah. just assume, like, consistent communication. Yes. Uh, assuming consistent cons communication, I don't think that there is a moral imperative. I think that, honestly, I think that the moral imperative at some point is to treat people as adults and to respect their ability to make decisions that might wind up upsetting them, assuming that you've provided them with the fullness of information that you have at your disposal. Mm -hmm. The other thing is you might make somebody, you might try to do what's good for somebody and hurt them. Anyway, yeah, I might, this, I yeah, might yeah. start a relationship, say, hey, I'm never going to date exclusively. Three months in, the person's trying to have me meet their family or whatever. And then I go, oh, I, I am getting the sense that you want more than me. We should end it. And now I've heartbroken that person. Now, I'm do, now I've done harm in order to prevent yeah, yeah. harm. I, I, so that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it seems weird to put all the onus on one person to prevent harm in both parties. What I can tell you, and this isn't to say, is... Um, and we've strayed way from Crystalia. Yeah, we're, we're off. I'm just talking about the world of dating. In my experience, and this isn't to say no, I don't. I can't think of a time when somebody has held me in such like a woman that I've dating has treated me as so irresponsible over the outcomes of my decisions. Yeah, nor would I want them to. Nor would I want them to. Yeah. Where they go, you know what? I actually do want this, but you're not prepared. Like I, I, I there's nothing approximating that in my past and i don't think there ought to be mm. i have made decisions in my past that have caused me harm and as i reflected on it i went the the, the biggest thing is did you tell me the truth mm -hmm. like if you lied to me no you had, then you then we got a problem you had a relationship where you were at one point you were not dating people exclusively and the woman said i'm looking for a husband i'm looking for kids and i'm looking for it soon mm -hmm. and you had a, you had that communication and then you dated for a little bit and then she ended things because you didn't want to be that husband and that father. Mm -hmm. And you would have liked to keep dating her. So I don't know how sad or harmed you were, but it wasn't your ideal in the moment. But I think that was perfect. You both were honest the whole time. There was a mismatch in what was wanted. And after a couple months of enjoying each other's company, it split. And now she's married with kids. And it's like mm -hmm. that to me is the is close to like the Plato's ideal of how that goes down, mm -hmm. which is to say everyone's honest, no one's manipulating anyone, and then lovingly parts ways, even if it made you sad in the moment because she had said the whole time this wasn't what she wanted. And I'd said the whole time that it wasn't uh, what you wanted. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So she and ultimately And we she, both, by the way, and we both made a decision knowing that those things weren't true to be together for a month, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I that to me is how that should play out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'd be curious what the. Uh, yeah, that's that's how I feel. It seems like the underlying thing is, be honest as much as you can, and beyond honest, congruent. Because that's an area that I've messed up in the past, where mm -hmm. it's like, you know, hey, I don't want this, and then can signal with other things that that you do, or you just got to try to make your communications uh, consistent. Mm -hmm. I think. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there, but uh, it was. If you want to give it a watch, I think what you will see that I saw is this is as confused as the current discourse on sex and power is in America mm -hmm. because he's apologizing vaguely to who? To the public? I, the people who deserve an apology as I was listening to this your fiance. are your fiance, Dude, your fiance and the people that you've <laughs> cheated on and perhaps the friends and family that you've ignored uh, because you were single-mindedly doing this. No, I'm sure he's done it, but the number one person that needs the apology is the fiance and that's the person that you hear about the least in mm -hmm. the blog post and perhaps if there was anyone that you treated with casual cruelty you know what i mean it's one thing to be like or if you lied to someone yes or if you lied to someone and so what i would say is like hey if you want hey you want to come over and have sex and then at the end you're like well now it's time for you to get the fuck out like okay we don't okay you don't need to do that <laughs> like there's yeah, there yeah. can be now neither are you should you be expected to wine and dine if you were very clear about your intention because well, again i want people to be treated as fully functioning yeah, no, you don't so rather be, than you don't want to be a dick to anyone <laughs> we've done this for uh we've done this for a while but yeah it's it's a as confused as the current discourse on sex and sexuality is in america and i think hopefully 
I learned something here. I don't even know. Yeah, what, <laughs> what's, what do you take away? What's your lesson? That America's relationship to sex is busted and it needs teasing out. And we, we, we pulled out some of the things. Is sex harmful and who's responsible for that? You know what I mean? Like where does it fit on the scale of things? Um, how, at what age should you have agency and responsibility and uh, the inability to claim victim status for decisions that you made that to, to get something that you wanted? Uh, and not just at what age, what are the factors that affect that? Because quite frankly, like if I'm being totally honest and I think about this, I think 18 is young and I think 18 is too young to join the army. Mm -hmm. I think that the pressure that can be put upon 18 year olds by recruiters and all these sorts of things. And I was 18 when I entered into college student loan debt. Uh, not that I couldn't have made the decision at 18, but the information that society had surrounded me with was oh, yeah. so bunk that it, it, I just made, I made the dumbest decision of my Dude, life. That, that is a totally viable and consistent outcome that could come from this. Is that 18 year olds can't say, listen, yeah. 18, we actually got this wrong. This is just too young for consent. It's to too vote. young for the military. It's too young to vote. Yeah. That's an option. I think the only thing I would say is just, just tie them together. Mm -hmm. If you're going to move up the age at which someone is smart enough to consider who they can have sex with, you should move up the age at which they're smart enough to give their life. Mm -hmm. I agree. And where I land is, okay, let's keep it at 18. Understand that 18 year olds are going to make decisions that they regret. Mine yeah. was a related to student loan debt. It wasn't related and some relationships, I suppose, but it wasn't related to sleeping with a famous person and feeling um, jilted. I don't actually mind moving it up to 21. Just saying you can't join the military until you're 21. Can't take out student loan debt. You can't take out student <laughs> loan debt until you're 21. And until you're 21, you can't have sex with anyone that's more than 24 months older or younger than you. I actually, I think the reason that 18 year olds in America are so likely to make bad decisions is because we've been extending adolescence. That's fair. So I think that the continued extension to 21 would just get you the same problems at 21. It seems like. Yeah, what does Europe do? Europe's the opposite. They, they start drinking younger and. Whenever you become an adult, you're going to make shitty decisions, mm. <laughs> you know, and it seems like the only way is to hurt yourself, be told that you're responsible for the hurt, even though like, dude, I was coerced into student loans, right? But they were mine mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Um, I wouldn't want to do it to my kids, but I look back on that and I go, okay, that was a wake up call. Like, and thank God it didn't end my life like mm. like it could have been uh going to the military and getting shot in some yeah, could country like, to pay, yeah. instead of taking out loans you and i could have died and i could have died and it could have been a, a coercive decision that wound up in my death um which really would have sucked but uh no i don't think you can extend adolescence i think uh, it's like yeah i guess the decisions that you should be allowed to make at that age should be ones that we have a decent degree of certainty will not end your life why um, do we do drinking at 21? Why do we do military sex and voting at 18, but drinking at 21? I'm sure there's some historical reason, but yeah, you, you pointed out, I think, just with the question that it's not philosophically consistent. At it all. just seems strange. It seems like the least important of the four. You get to choose who's the president, choose if you join the military, choose to have sex with adults, choose to consume alcohol. Yeah. The alcohol seems like. If I were picking one to be at 21, it wouldn't be my first choice. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. It's We've got all kinds of weirdness around adulthood in America. No question. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description. and We'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.